There's a movie that came out in 2016 about Princess Doke. It's called The Last Princess. Um, Doke is played by the very famous actor Son Ye Jin, and she does a great job of portraying uh, Doke's kind of ups and downs in her mental health. Princess Doke is one of the most interesting figures in Korean history and one that a lot of people don't know about. She was born in 1912 and she was the daughter of King Gojong, who was 60 years old at the time. And even though she wasn't a princess, she wasn't formally recognized as one by Japan until 1917. Her father really wanted her to have an arranged marriage with a Korean from a very young age so that she can maintain that Korean identity. But unfortunately, the Japanese government blocked that and interfered with that. She was sent away to Japan to study, and it was there that she later married an aristocrat. When the Japanese empire fell apart after the World War II, Doke lost her title, um, she filed for divorce from her husband, and her daughter disappeared in what is believed to be a suicide case. And that's when Doke's mental illnesses really took control of her life and brought her great ups and downs. She only turned to Korea in 1962. It had been 37 years since she'd been in Korea. And actually the president at the time, Lee Seung man did not want her here. He thought it would cause a lot of political tension. But to the request of a reporter who interviewed Do Kye, the government finally invited her to officially come. And she lived in Changdeokgung Palace from 1962 until her death in 1989. So exploring Cheongdukgung is really the best way to feel her presence. She pretty much never left the area after she came back to Korea. Princess Sokje was here when Cheongdukgung was open for visitors. So there are a lot of stories of people saying that they could hear her singing or playing her music from a distance. Now, her part of the palace was closed off to visitors, of course. Um, and a friend of a friend, um, his name is Peter Bartholomew. He's a an American who lived in Korea and wrote extensively about Korea since the 1960s. He one time went to a garden party in Changdeokgung Palace and he said he could meet her and um, he could hear her kind of, well, we already said she has a colorful character, so he could hear her kind of singing and um, shouting and all that kind of stuff. And he said it was a really great experience to get to meet her. He's very lucky. I imagine she was quite the character and very interesting to talk to. 지병으로 돌아가셨습니다. 전원가입니다. The movie is pretty historically accurate. They do a pretty great job of kind of showing her whole life. But the one part that critics kind of touch on is that in the movie she has a big role in the decolonization of the Korean Empire. And they're not exactly sure historically how much of an influence Dokke had at that time. But it definitely adds for an interesting storyline. This is my good friend, the Heichi. You'll spot them all over Seoul's palaces. Speaking of palace, which one would you like to see first? The small, lesser known, but quiet and quaint Doksugung, or the very popular Gyeongbokgung? 